Okay guys, so uh, Step Sequencer and Drum Machine Designer in Logic 10.5. Um, for the genres of like British Grime, Hip Hop, Trap, any of those genres that use tuned and pitched drums, I'm going to show you how you can use the interaction between Step Sequencer and the new Drum Machine Designer to do some really cool stuff with those effects. And um, I'm probably going to take this a bit further than you've seen in other videos, right? So we're going to look at tuning kicks to do tune patterns and hats as well but no we're not going to just tune the kicks we're going to do things where the kicks can have short little notes and really long booming notes and things like that and we're also going to look at kick slides and all that business right okay so look, i've got a basic pattern here okay now Obviously, a step sequencer pattern on a drum machine designer track, or even a, a traditional MIDI region with MIDI notes in it, you know, the one you edit in piano roll, right? Only one drum will respond to one pitch of note. Otherwise, you can't have different drums in the same pattern, so the kick only responds to the kick drum note. And the snare only responds to the snare note, and the hi-hat only responds to the closed hi-hat note, etc. You know? And the way it works is you put a pattern on the main drum machine designer track and the drum machine designer itself, the pads, acts as a sort of drum map. So if you look at the kick here, it says input C1, output G0. Right. So this means if you put a pattern on the main drum machine designer track, all the notes in the pattern go through this pad thing. And that ensures that only the C1 note in your pattern will trigger the kick. So the kick pad takes that incoming C1 note, but it outputs the note to the quick sampler on this pad at G0, right? Which is the root key for the sample in the quick sampler for this pad. Now every drum pad responds to only one key, one note, one pitch in your pattern, and then outputs that to the sample in the quick sampler for that pad on the right note to trigger the sample at its root key. That is to trigger the sample at its original pitch. Okay. All right. But most people know by now, because um, Logic's been out for a couple of weeks, most people know that if you open up the drum stack and you take one of the individual output tracks for an individual drum, if you put a pattern then, let's put a regular MIDI region on this kick drum track. If you put a pattern directly on the track for a drum, then you're sending notes in to the track and the channel for the individual drum. So you're sending notes in from your pattern directly to the quick sampler for that drum. And individual quick samplers have their drum sample mapped across the entire keyboard. Like every other sample you put into quick sampler is always mapped across the whole keyboard. So you put a pan on the actual individual drum track and you can play it. You can play that drum across the entire range of the keyboard. Yeah? From C minus two right up to C eight. Okay, most people know that. So in some of the tutorials, um, you might see something like this. The, the person will get a basic pattern like this. And then they'll say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make one of the drums with a pitched pattern. So I'll show you how you you might normally have been shown how to do this. So here's my main pattern on the main track. And I go to the kick row here with the kick pattern, and I copy that row. That copies all the steps on the kick row, and also it copies all the settings for the row if the settings are different from the main pattern, right? Okay, so we copy the row. It, it, that, that copies the pattern, the steps. And then in some of these tutorials, you might see the person then go, right, and now we'll go to the kick, to the individual track for the kick. And we'll put a step sequence of pattern on that kick track directly. Right? That, um, what I, it is. It, I'm. I'm saying this now. It's important to make this pattern the same length as your pattern you've copied the steps from. So I'm making this 32 steps, two bars. 
reduce the default four bar container to two bars, right? Okay, that gives you, when you put a new step sequencer pattern on an individual drum, it gives you one lane assigned to the root key of that drum on that track in the quick sampler. So this lane is on the root key for the 808 kick in, in that quick sampler on this track, which is G0. Okay, and when you've done that, then paste in the steps and that paste the kick drum pattern into this new step sequencer on the kick drum track. And then you go back to your main pattern and mute the kick there. And now the kick will play from this pattern on the kick track, along with all the other parts of the pattern that are playing from the main pattern on the main track. And you get the same thing. It sounds the same. OK, but when it then comes to tuning, um, what you might be told is, OK, now what we do is we right click and or control click, depending on how your mouse is set up. My mouse is set up to right click for the toolbox. You bring up the shortcut menu on that step sequencer pattern on the kick track that you just pasted the kick pattern into and convert it to MIDI. OK, now you can get the notes and tune them to anything you want. All that business. Yeah, you can do that. But there's no actual need to convert to a MIDI pattern like that, to a traditional MIDI pattern. If you stay with the step sequencer pattern, you can still do all the pitch stuff and more in step sequencer. So let me show you that, right? So what we do is, all we do is just zoom in so we can really see this. We switch to note, and there's all the steps on the pitch for the kick drum, G0. But we can adjust the pitch of every step. We don't need to convert it to a MIDI pan. Yeah. And if you need to change the octave, you just go to octave. And for all rows, you use the arrows here to click the up arrow and go up an octave. Now all those notes are an octave higher. Yeah or go down an octave, and now they're all an octave lower. OK, I'll put it back to the original octave. So all those notes are now on G0 again. But I can now do my pitch stuff, right? So um, I'll start with the original pitch for that note. Then I'll go down to A sharp one. Back to C, uh, to sorry G zero, the original pitch, and then A sharp one for these two. That sounds roughly the right pitch to me, but you can obviously tweak that. Yeah, straight away I've got a pitched pattern, but we can go further. We can go much further than that. Check this out. If we go to the track for the kick drum, there's its channel with the quick sampler on. Open up the quick sampler. Let me just slow this down so you can see the pattern as well. Every quick sampler for every drum in drum machine in a drum machine designer kit is set to one shot, which means that even the shortest little note will trigger the sample to play all the way till the end. That's how it normally is with drum machines and drum boxes and samplers loading up drum sets. You always put drums into one shot. So tiny little notes will trigger the, the drum sample all the way through. But if you switch it to classic, now the note length determines how long the sample plays down its length. Now this is a long booming 808 kick that lasts about 1.8 seconds. These are little 16th length notes, the same length as the step value that they're sitting on. So now we switch this kick drum to classic mode, these little 16th notes are only going to trigger the sample to play back about that far down its length. Watch the little player when it triggers. Yeah, only playing till about here. And then as soon as the note ends, it cuts off completely. So what you do is you go to the envelope here, Set it to ADSR. That's a tactic case sustain release. Push the decay right up. 
as far as it will go, then slam it hard to the left as far as it will go. Now you've set zero decay. And now just bring the release out to about 150 milliseconds thereabouts. That's just over a tenth of a second. And that means when these little short 16th notes trigger this kick to that point and then it just stops, the sound of the kick won't suddenly just stop. It will decay away. It'll have a little bit of decay to silence at the time of the release here, which, as I said, I've set to just over that's a tenth and a half of a tenth of a second, right? Um, OK, so now these little short notes are going to trigger the kick to about there. But when the note ends and the sample stops, it will just decay away a little bit. Sounds a bit more natural. Now we've got short little 808 kicks. But now we can go to tie and we can tie the steps together to make some of the kicks long and some of them short. So we're not only getting a tuned pattern, but we can have kicks at different lengths in our pattern. So I'll tie those first one, two, three, four, five sixteenths together. So now this kick drum note is going to last five sixteenths. That's a whole quarter note and another sixteenth. This is going to give me a long kick. And I'll do the same there and the same here. I'm going to make that one even longer. I'm going to make this a quarter beat and an eighth, two more sixteenths. Now we're going to get long kick, short, 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 long, short, even longer. I'll just make that one a bit longer. I'll make that one three sixteenths, that one two sixteenths, and that one two sixteenths. So this is an eighth, that's an eighth, that's an eighth, this is three sixteenths, and this little short one is just a sixteenth. That'll be a little bump onto that bigger note following it there. And now we get this. Let me just put the compressor on here, just to sort of even it out, and give it a bit more. So now we've got not only a tune pattern at any time we want to, we can obviously go in back to note and retune those steps, you know, like they could be anything you want. That could be C1. You know, whatever you like. But we've also got different lengths of kick. I'm telling you, man, this is just, just you don't need to go out of step sequencer to do all this stuff. I'll just show you another quick one. Then we'll, oh, well, before we do that, let's look at uh, pit, uh, kick drum slides. We you just use the glide here on the kick drum quick sampler. And however long that glide is in milliseconds, that's half a second, 500 milliseconds, right? That's how long it'll take for the note to pitch up or pitch down. Yeah. You do all that. Let's do another one with the hi-hat. I'll go to the main pan. Hi-hat. Oh. Hi-hat, zoom in this bit. Hi-hat, copy the whole row, which copies all the steps plus all the settings, but we're just concerned with the steps. So you'd have to do copy row, which copies everything, including the steps. Um, go to the hi close hi-hat track, the, the actual track addressing the quick sampler for the hi-hat directly, put in a, a pattern region there. There it is, with a single row in it on the root key for the closed hi-hat. Make sure this is the same length as my original pattern, 32 steps. And I'll reduce that default four bar long region to two bars, the same length as the pattern. And then I do the same thing. I paste in the steps. So I've pasted the height pattern in now. There it is. Now I go back to my main pattern and mute the height. 
the only thing playing from the original pattern is the snare and the, well it's two snares layered okay back to here there's my hi-hat and if you look I've got some um, note repeats in there there's a triplet there and a couple of triplets there let's turn that up so I'll put some it's it's a fairly common thing to hear where there's little like note repeats of, of shakers or hats to do some tuning on it so I'll again go to note and these these two steps are where the two little triplet repeats are so we'll pitch that down there and that one as well I'll pitch the one after it so they climb back up I could always pitch them up higher it's so high you, you lose the sense of the hat when it gets too high yeah you see what I mean so I'll go down instead like that but I'll drop this one down a bit before it yeah whatever you like right so there Just have that step there where it does the note repeat tune down and these two yeah easy peasy <laughs> you don't need to convert these patterns to regular midi regions to do all these techniques you can do it all here we get with the notes and the tie we can set up like a kick drum pattern with any length notes in the pattern we want but it's all about in terms of when you want to go with making the length of a long sample like a booming kick determined by the note lengths which we do with tie to make longer and shorter notes right you must put the sample the sampler for that drum track the individual drum track you must put it into classic mode so the note length determines how long it plays back and you do the thing with the envelope there don't make this release too long because if it's too long to decay to silence the short kicks won't sound short they'll go they'll trigger to there and then this will still decay all the way further down so make the decay just you tune it you listen if it's too short if it's too short the shorter kicks will sound unnatural you want just enough release that you you can hear the drum decaying but not too long a release so that it decays for too long and then you lose the shorter notes yeah there you go so there's some techniques um, using the step sequencer and the drum machine designer together when we're, when we're exploiting the fact that each Drum machine designer pad has a quick sampler attached to it and we can exploit that by putting any drum sampler into classic and then our note lengths determine the length of the of the kick or any other drum but usually you're going to do that with kicks and we can do all the tuning as well in step sequence here yeah, yeah so um, the beauty of sticking in um, just to say yeah you can do it by converting the pattern to MIDI normal MIDI notes but the beauty of staying in step sequence is that now I've got my hi-hat pattern here for example anytime I want I can go back to the note repeat and add in more little note repeats where I want them yeah which is a lot more fiddly to do if you're if you're messing with little notes in piano edit yeah so we keep with the fantastic features of step sequence of this way but we can still do all our pitch effects and and more as I've showed you different note lengths for things like booming kicks yeah okay I hope that's useful man and I'll see you for the next one